Hey folks, today I put together a tutorial all about the most important aspects of Apple's alternative to Microsoft Excel, known as Numbers, coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hi everyone, I've got a great class for you today, and if at any point you would like to skip ahead to learn about a specific section, I've posted all of the time codes down below in the description of the video, along with their respective chapter titles. Also, if you like this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and just make sure you hit that little bell icon so that you can get notifications whenever I come out with a new video. At this point, let's get down to business and let's switch to my Mac. When you first open Numbers, you'll be brought to the template chooser. And my advice is that if you're new to numbers or just bad at math, I think you'll discover that these templates can really make your life a lot easier. Now, to keep the pacing moving on this video, I'm only going to go through a few templates and specifically the ones that I think that you guys will find the most useful. But the good news is there's a lot of good stuff here. At the top, we have all of your basic templates like a blank document, checklist, checklist total, which is really helpful anytime you just need to quickly total up a bunch of items. If we scroll down a little bit, you'll find several personal finance templates, and I think that these in particular are really awesome. So let's go into this first one. Here we have a template for a very simple budget, and as you can probably guess, everything that you see here can be swapped out. So if I click into any of these cells with dollar amounts, I can just input my correct numbers, and the graph that you see on the side will automatically update. What if I had a monthly expense that isn't listed here that I want to factor in? No problem. Just click into this cell, and if you look here where it has the row number here on the side, I can hover my cursor over this area to reveal an arrow. When I click on that, I can just add a row above or below and add my additional expense. And as you can see, everything updates when I click out of this field. Let's leave this document and head back to the template chooser. One of the other templates that I really love here is the My Stocks template. Let's go into it. Let's say you have investments in the stock market and you just want a simple document that you can use to track and see how they perform over time. What's really cool with this type of template is that the formulas that are inside this template actually have the ability to talk to the internet, which makes it super easy to put this type of a document together. Literally, all you need to do is type in the stock symbol here Manually enter the number of shares that you have and the price that you paid for those shares, and it does the rest. I'm going to walk you through this right now, and in the process, we're going to end up talking a little bit about navigating around a numbers document. So let's say I have 100 shares of Alphabet, which is, of course, the company that owns Google. I'll just type in G-O-O-G, -O which is their stock symbol, and now let me teach you a little trick about navigating. Anytime you want to move to the next cell to the right, you can just use the tab key on your keyboard. And if you want to move left, it's very similar. All you need to do is hold down the shift key and then press tab. Navigating up or down is very similar, but in this case, you're going to be using either the enter or return key. So pressing the enter key will make the cell drop by one and adding the shift key, we can now make it go up. So using my tab keys, I'll just change the data that we have listed here. Let's say I paid $900 for a share at that time. And as you can see, it instantly calculates the current value. You can probably imagine that just by taking a little bit of time to get all of your investments listed here, this can be a really useful tool when it comes to visualizing your portfolio. Hey folks, we're going to take a really brief commercial break, but when we come back, I'm going to show you how to customize and modify one of these templates so that when you go to open it, it already has all of your information. We'll be right back. All right, so quick survey question for all of you. So last week I did a video all about pages. Obviously this video is all about numbers. The next obvious topic would be for me to do a class all about Keynote but I'm not sure if that's what you guys want or not. So if you're watching me on YouTube, a little card icon just appeared at the top right of your screen. It's a simple poll, yes or no, do we make a keynote class? Let me know your thoughts. Going back to the template chooser, you'll see we have a lot of other templates that we're not gonna cover in this video, but I do hope you'll check them out on your own. 
The last one that I did want to mention is the invoice template. And I would like to use this template to show you how to customize a template so that when you do go to open it, it already has information that's going to be consistent, like your business name, address, sales tax percentage, etc. So let's say we have these two sisters who own a cupcake shop and they want to edit this template so that they can use it for catering services. The first thing I'll do is open a finder window and drag and drop this logo into the document. If I need to resize it, all I need to do is grab one of the corners and then drag it to get it to the size that I want. As far as the rest of the placeholder data, I'll just quickly swap out this info, update the sales tax, and manually type in some new data fields like customer name, address, etc. Now, in order to turn this into a template, all we need to do is highlight any of the fields that are going to ultimately get swapped out with personalized information, like in this case, customer name. Then go up here into the top menu bar where it says Format. From there, go into Advanced and select Define as Placeholder Text. After I've repeated all of those steps for the placeholder text, the final step is to now go into the File menu and select Save as Template. That way, the next time I go into the Template Chooser, this newer, more updated template will be at the very bottom of the list. For those of you who are converting to numbers from Microsoft Excel, I wanted to mention that if you have a favorite template from Excel that you want to be able to use in Numbers, what you could simply do is open that spreadsheet, and yes, Numbers does open Excel documents, and then after a little configuring, using that Define as Placeholder Text feature I showed you just a moment ago, you could very easily convert old templates from Excel so that they're available to you here in Numbers. One resource that I wanted to mention in this video is a totally free website that has tons of templates not only for numbers, but also pages and keynote. That website is iWorkCommunity.com, and you will be happy to know that you do not need any kind of an account or login to access those templates. This is also very useful when it comes to finding obscure templates for very specific uses. Let's now go into a blank numbers document, and I'm just going to quickly add a bunch of numbers into different cells, just so we have some content to work with. Up here in the top menu bar, you'll notice that we have an icon that says Insert. This is the access to the top five most commonly used functions in numbers, which includes Sum, Average, Minimum, Maximum, Count, and Product. There are over 250 different types of functions available, and if you want to explore them, you can just tap the equals key on your keyboard. When you do, a little menu will pop out from the side. From here, you can browse through them, and as you can see, it will give you a little description below to attempt to explain what it means. Now, admittedly, I've never really excelled when it comes to math, no pun intended, and I even had trouble understanding some of the explanations, but you smart people go ahead. Let's say I just want to tell numbers to add two different cells. To do that, all I need to do is tap the equals button, then click on the different cells that I wanted to total. When you're done, just tap the enter key. Let me add numbers into a few of these other cells to show you something else. Let's say I want this bottom row to show the totals of each of these columns. To replicate this equation, if I hover my cursor over this cell, you'll notice a tiny yellow dot. When I drag that to the right, you'll see that it automatically deploys the same function. This feature can also be very helpful when dealing with dates. Let's clear out this data so that I can show you what I mean. If I go into this cell and type in a date, once again, I can grab that little yellow dot and drag it and look what happens. It knows exactly what to do. One of the topics that I wanted to make sure that I covered in this video is how to make these little grid lines appear when actually printing a numbers document. To do that, just go here into the formatting menu and click on the cells tab at the top right. From here, we have all of your border options as well as the ability to colorize the background of your cells. So for example, if you wanted the total to have a yellow background, you could just click on that cell, then come over here into Fill and change it from Transparent to Yellow. The next feature I wanted to show you is how to collaborate with others on a Numbers document. To do this, just click on the Collaborate button here in the top menu bar. 
This is a great feature whenever you have multiple people who all need to have access to the same document. You can even regulate their access and ability to modify the document by clicking here into Share Options. Because a lot of people who use numbers are dealing with personal finances, one of the features that I wanted to make sure that I highlighted in this video is how to set a password for your document. To do this, just go into File, and then at the bottom, you'll see an option for Set Password. Just in case any of you are thinking of storing your usernames and passwords into this type of a document, instead, I'd strongly recommend that you consider getting a password management system. The one that I recommend is LastPass. If you'd like to see my video tutorial on that app, just click the card that just appeared at the top right of your screen if you're watching me on YouTube, or you'll find a link down below. Anytime you need to send a numbers document to either a Windows PC user or just someone who is using Microsoft Excel on their Mac, there are technically two different ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you my favorite method. A lot of people have the mindset of going to their email and then attaching a document. But in this case, we want to actually do the reverse. So from the document, we're going to go into the top menu bar where it says Share, then go into Send a Copy, and finally click on the Apple Mail application. From here, you can see that we can export this document in multiple formats, and the beauty of doing it this way as opposed to exporting a separate copy is that this way you don't have multiple copies of the same spreadsheet. It's just one copy that has the ability to be shared in multiple formats. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll also consider checking out my class all about pages, which is of course Apple's alternative to Microsoft Word. If you'd like to watch that video, just click on the little card icon that just appeared at the top right of your screen if you're watching me on YouTube. There's also a link down below. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.